This presentation is an introduction and overview of the GEM standard. The presentation's been broken down into five parts. There's also some self-description functionality in a GEM interface where through the GEM interface, the host system can ask for a list of collection events that are available, status variables, uh, data that's available with the collection events, as well as equipment constants and alarms. Those are all published through the GEM interface to facilitate plug and play applications. There's also alarms to report when dangerous things happen. This is anything dangerous to the material or the equipment itself or the operator. Those are all considered alarms. And again, it's published subscribe. So the equipment will document some set of available alarms that can be notified to the host and the host will subscribe to the alarms they want and then the equipment will then publish those alarms. Anytime they become set or cleared, those uh, alarm notifications will go to the host system so they can track them. And the reason it's optional is because what dictates an alarm, uh, there's a surprising variability in interpretation so basically the factory can turn off alarms notification if they don't really think it's an alarm. And this is, the, this is a, a feature that drives a lot of fault detection applications at the factory. Okay, remote control, there's a lot of features around this. Basically in GEM, a remote command has a name and it has a, um, optionally each available command can can also have a list of name value pairs so that when the factory sends a remote command to the fact to the uh, equipment's gem interface each remote command can have data and this allows for for excellent control of the equipment and a lot of flexibility so typical features for this are starts and stops, aborts, pauses, resumes. Those are all standard GEM commands. The selection of a recipe is a GEM remote command. And again, you can have custom commands to do any custom control that ought to be there. Like calibrating sometimes is implemented through the GEM interface. GEM also allows for equipment constants. This is how you um, configure equipment behavior remotely. And this is particularly useful if there's a number of equipment at the factory and you want consistent behavior across all of the equipment. And the typical things you'll see that are equipment constants on a GEM interface are like options, you may have an option when a board comes in, you may have an option to have the operator stop and inspect and confirm that it's the right board to come in or the right lot to come in. Some factories might want an operator to do this check, but some factories might not. And that's where making this an equipment constant is really cool because then you can turn the operator check step on or off. And then there's recipe management, like Stu mentioned. Uh, it's, this is one of the key features of JAM is to make sure that the equipment is running the right recipe at the right time to minimize scrap. This also allows protection of golden recipes. So you can save them off of the equipment. And ideally, you can copy the recipes from one equipment to another to make sure they're running the same recipes. 
GEM also requires material movement or has this as an option for reporting when material arrives and material departs and allows for just for board tracking on the equipment. Terminal services is where you can send a text message to the operator. There's actually a collection event to acknowledge that when it occurs. And then the operator can also send text messages back to the host system if they want to. And sometimes there's really neat applications where this comes in handy to have a, a standard way to send information to the operator, particularly as clean rooms uh, are hard to get in and out of. There's also a clock feature in GEM for reporting the clock from the equipment. It also allows the host system to synchronize the clock with the equipment. And by synchronizing clocks between the host and the equipment, it, it allows for the data collection to be significantly more usable uh, to a lot more applications because now you can correlate data from one GEM interface to another. And without the synchronization of clocks, it, you can't really correlate data from one equipment to another or to other systems in the factory. GEM also has a feature called spooling where messages that normally are sent from the equipment to the host can be saved automatically so that if you lose communication, the GEM interface can save those messages. And then when you reconnect, the host system can ask for those messages again. So you're not losing data. And this concludes part four of the GEM introduction. Please proceed to part number five to learn more information. Thank you.